In this lesson, we're going to look at understanding angles. Up until now, all of our angle measurements have been in degrees. We've made sure our calculator is in degree mode, and that's just the way it's been up to this point, because that's what we're used to using, and that's how everything's set up for us. At this point, we're going to start looking at another um, measurement, another unit for measuring angles, and that's called the radian. That's right here. Now the way the radian is defined, if we look at this circle here, we can see that this is a radius r, this is also arc r. So those two measurements are the same. And the radian is this angle in between those. So if we read this, it says, radians are measured in a circle with radius r, a central angle of one radian, so that's what this one r represents, is subtended, or comes from an arc with length r. One radian is the angle at the center of the circle when a radius of the circle is rotated through an arc that is the same length as the radius. That's again. So here's my radius, and then we've rotated this arm here, okay, the same length r to form an angle of one radian, okay? So you can see here when the radius ab and arc length BC are the same length, the central angle, angle BAC, is one radian or one little r there. Now, in terms of degrees, because that's what we're used to using, the squiggle mark means it's approximately equal to, congruent to, 57 degrees. Okay, so when we're dealing with degree symbols, 57 degrees is what we're looking at one radian. And in this lesson, we're going to practice going between degrees and radians and seeing what um, our measurements look like and what do they mean so we can start using radians more readily. Now it says radians are natural measurements because the angle of one radian is based on radius and arc lengths. Degree measures are artificial measurements because someone decided that a circle should be subdivided into 360 parts called degrees. The value of 360 was probably used because there's approximate 360 days in a year. Now pi comes into effect here. What is pi? In the diagram below, the arc length is the same as the radius, and the central angle is one radian. Okay, they're shown as various radians here. So here's one radian in here, here's one in here, here's one in here. But this little guy, this isn't one radian, that's 0.14 of a radian. Okay, so we're seeing here that 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. So when we say pi radians, that is a measure. So this all, this all added up together is either pi radians, or we can call that 180 degrees, which is what we're used to using. Now, if we add up all the little pieces here, we've got one radian here, plus one radian here, plus one radian here. Add those up, well, that gives me three radians. And then this little piece here we said was 0.14 radians. So if we add that, 0.14 radians, well, together that's 3.14 radians. And this should be looking very familiar to you because that is equal to pi radians. Okay? Pi, sorry, radians. We could put the little r up here. Well, we know that pi radians is the same as 180 degrees. Okay, so that's why all of that added together gives you pi radians and gives you 180 degrees. If we multiplied that by 2, 2 pi radians, well, then that's equal to 360 degrees. Okay? All right, let's take a look at this next page. It says the table below shows some commonly used measurements as degrees and radians. So here's that 360 degrees is 2 pi, 180 degrees is pi. So if we half that again, 90 degrees is pi by 2 radians. If we take the 180 divided by 3, that's 60 degrees, so pi by 3 radians. 180 degrees divided by 4, that's 45 degrees, or pi by 4 radians. 
180 degrees divided by 6 is 30 degrees or pi by 6 radians. Now these we'll see more when we're dealing with a unit circle and some of you might have seen that if you've dealt with the unit circle before. We don't deal with that too much in this course but you'll see those are very commonly used radians. Now all of those have equivalent measures in decimal form. So if you look we know pi is 3.14 and you can go from there. Divide that by 2, divide that by 3, 4, 6, or multiply it by 2, and you'll get all those other radians. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up some proportions um, using this formula here to convert from degrees to radians. And really, you can go back from radians to degrees. So the easiest version, conversions you can use is that pi radians is 180 or 360 is 2 pi. And we'll use those interchangeably. Now there's quite a few examples, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one, show you how to do the first one, and then I'll give you the answers for the other ones. So you can hit pause on the video after we go through the first one, try them on your own to make sure you understand the concept, and then press play and check back with the answers. And that's what I'll use throughout this whole lesson. Alright, so the first one says convert the following to radians. So they're giving us 50 degrees. So if I use this formula up here, I'll just put it into view so we can see that for a number of degrees well we're given 50 degrees and the 180 degrees is there I'm just substituting the 50 for the number of degrees and the 180 degrees is given setting up my proportion we want to know how many radians that's my question mark that's what I'm trying to solve for if we know that 180 degrees is pi. Okay, so that's how we're setting up the proportion. We know those values, we're given 50 degrees and we want to know how many radians that's equal to. So whatever mathematical version you want to use in order to um, solve for R, so you can use uh, cross multiply and divide, you can use uh, multiply both sides by pi to get rid of the denominator, you're using algebra to, to isolate R and to solve. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. If I multiply both sides by pi, multiply this side by pi, the pi's cancel out, and I've got 50 pi divided by 180. Okay, so r is equal to 50 pi over 180. Now if we want this in decimal places, we'd have 50 pi pi is right here, divided by 180 degrees, and you get this decimal place, and you can round to two decimal places. So that would be approximately 0 0.87 radians. Okay, so r is equal to 0 0.87 radians, and that would be your final answer. So go ahead and try B and C as well to make sure that you can do that. For B, you should get 4.71 radians. For C, you should get 7.33 radians. Number two says convert the following to degrees. So same idea using the same formula, but now instead of being given the degrees, we're being given the radians. So how would we do this? For A, I've got the degrees is unknown over 180. I know that this is 5 pi by 4, and that's all over pi. So first of all, I'm going to simplify this. I can see that my pi's are already going to cancel each other out. So I'm left with d over 180 degrees is equal to 5 quarters. At this point all I have left to do is get the d by itself. It's divided by 180. Opposite would be to multiply both sides by 180. Those cancel. Put that in my calculator. So d is equal to 5 times 180 divided by Four, you get 225 and that's a measure in degrees so 225 degrees
All right, go ahead and try B and C, and then check back. All right, so for B and C, you should have noticed there's a little bit less work to do because you didn't have that fraction in there. All you had to do is multiply both sides by 180 degrees, and then you get your answer. So for B, 72 degrees, and for C, 602 degrees. Notice what we're using for units, the little circle there for my degree symbol and the little R up top for your radians. Now you'll notice for radians that R is sometimes not given, but for degrees that circle is always given. You can see for these ones, they're known to be radian uh, measurements even though those little R's aren't there. All right, let's take a look at the next example. The measure of angle PCA is one radian. Calculate the measure of angle PCA in degrees. Well, at the very beginning, I already told you what one radian was equal to, and we said it was 57 degrees approximately. But where is this coming from? So let's have a look. If we use the same formula that we were using for the other um, questions, the same proportions, we want to know the number of degrees knowing that 180 degrees is the same as pi. And we're given that we're trying to solve for one radian. So if we solve for D here, multiply both sides by 180 degrees, those cancel, so I'm left with D is equal to 180 divided by pi. Well, what is that in our calculators? 180 divided by pi, and you, there's your 57 degrees, 57.295. So if it's um, to two decimal places, we would get 57.29, so 57.30. Approximately, So that's where that 57 degrees is coming from. All right, example two. It says calculate the value of each angle in radian measurement. Well, that's we've done that before. But now this is different. It says leave as an exact value. So if I go back here for a minute, this is what they're asking for when they say leave as an exact value. So they want it in pi radians because there's no decimal places there. There's no rounding. That's why it's called an exact value. Whereas for these ones, well, because of that pi, right, we have decimal places and we're going to round that. So that's what they're asking for here. So how exactly do we do that? Well, we start the same way we started all the other questions. So I've got degrees and I want to change to radians. Using that same formula, I've got 90 degrees over 180 degrees. I want to know how many radians if pi is 180 degrees. So start the same way and solve for r. So I'm going to multiply both sides by pi. So those go away. And I'm left with 90 pi over 180 is equal to r. And really that's fine. You can leave it right there and that is already an exact values. The next step you can take if you want it to look like those other ones is reduce your fraction. Okay, so 90 over 180, that's one half. So that would be the same as pi over 2 is equal to r. Okay, or 1 over 2 pi if you want to do it that way, 1 over 2 pi is equal to r. However you want to do that, it's up to you. But both of those are valid answers, just one's a reduced fraction of the other. Okay? Now, if you need help reducing your fractions, if it's something that's not really working out nicely, just a reminder in your calculator, if I had 90 over 180, that would automatically put it as a decimal place. That's another way you could have written that 0.5 pi. However, sometimes you'll have a trailing decimal. So if you go into math, frac, enter, it would give you that one half pi. Okay? 
So go ahead and try B and C and see what you get for exact values in radians. For B you should get pi by 4 and for C you should get 5 sixth pi. For example 3 you're doing the exact same math but now they want you to round to two decimal places. So for example for D here we've got 240 over 180 is equal to r over pi. Solving for r, I've got 240 pi over 180. Planking that into my calculator, 240 pi divided by 180, 4.19 to two decimal places. All right, so go ahead and try E and F on your own and come back and check. So for E, 7.85 radians, and for F, 12.04 radians. The last example of this type says determine which angle is larger, 3 pi or 8 radians. And notice I said 8 radians, um, even though there's no radians measured there, and this would actually be 3 pi radians as well. So they're both in the same unit already, but how do I know which one's going to be larger? Well, if you just change the 3 pi, right? Well, what is 3 times pi? That would give me 9.42 approximately. So 9.42 is greater than, oops, not a 7, greater than 8. So that means that 3 pi is larger. Okay, and you could sort of do that in your head because you know pi is about 3. 3 times 3 is 9, and that's already bigger than 8. So you can do that using some reasoning as well. All right, the last type of example that we're going to look at, uh, for example 5, we're actually going to look at our sinusoidal functions here. So it says using radians to state the domain of a graph. So we've already talked about what a periodic function is and what it looks like. Okay, but now we're looking at the domain. So it says state the number of radians in the domain of each graph. Recall that domain is the set of all the x values represented by the graph of a relation. Write down your answer in terms of pi and also decimal form rounded to two decimal places. Each graph shows the graph of the function y equals sine x. So we know the behavior from our previous lesson of what sine x graph should look like. We also know that one full cycle, like when you're going around a circle, right, we have our unit circle here, we always start here, one full circle if we were to measure that is 360 degrees. So half a circle would be 180 degrees. So just as a note, right, pi we remember is approximately 180 degrees, which is half a period. That means we've gone halfway around. 2 pi is 360 degrees, which is one period one cycle. If you think of a circle once around, if you think of um, anything else that has some sort of cycle, like a pendulum or a clock, a grandfather clock, it's one swing back and forth, or even a swing, right, outside. One cycle is all the way there and all the way back, okay? So when we're looking here at this graph, I can see we've started here at zero, and then I've gone part way and then that would be one full cycle. So this here is zero degrees. This would be 180 degrees. So here's 360 degrees. So if we keep going, what's another 180 degrees? That would be 540 degrees. So you're looking at more than one full cycle. In terms of pi, this would be pi, 2 pi, and then 3 pi. 
okay? So here, from 0 to 2 pi, if we're looking at there, that would be one period, okay, or one full cycle. Whereas here, we've got another half period. So measuring the full graph, everything that we see there. So the domain shows one and a half periods. So in terms of what we're actually being asked to do, we've got one and a half periods is equal to 3 pi, and we can count that out. We saw that there. We also saw that that was 540 degrees. If we were to change our 3 pi radians um, to decimal form, that would be 9.42 radians. And the way I got that was just taking 3 times pi. And you can see it right there, rounded to two decimal places. Oh, and we had done that in the previous question too. Okay, so take a look at the next graph. And let's try this again. Now looking at this, I can see a couple of differences. One, um, I've got more going on here. I've got more cycles shown. And two, I can see that it's also in the negative direction. How are we supposed to handle that? Well, the same thing, same way we do everything else, right? Start with what you know, and then use it to apply to a, a new situation. So I'm going to start here again, the same way I did before, and say that, okay, then this is um, from this point to this point, that would be part of a cycle. I thought it's half of a cycle, so that would be 180 degrees. The next piece would be 360 degrees. So I'm back at my starting point, right? Then again, another half cycle, so add that on. That would give me 540 degrees, and actually I can see that it goes again and then that would be 720 degrees. So two full cycles are shown in the positive end of this. Now, if I did this in pi radians, this would be pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, and 4 pi. So up to there we should be comfortable. Now what happens to the other side of things? Well, this is just negative pi, and then in terms of our degrees, that's negative 180 degrees. So it's the same thing, just in the negative direction. But in terms of what we're counting here, okay, well, from 0 to 360 here, that's one period shown. And then from 360 to 720, that's another period shown. So that's two full cycles. And if we go the other direction, that's only 0 0.5 of the period. So we won't call that negative because it's still a cycle. It's just in a different direction. So what do we have shown here? We've got two and a half periods shown. Two and a half periods is the same as five pi. And although we showed four pi in the positive and one pi in the negative, total what we have here is 5 pi radians. Okay, so we include that negative pi in our radian counting. So if we change that to decimal place, that's 15.71 approximately radians, and in degrees that would be 900 degrees. That's it for today's lesson. What you need to take from this is knowing how to convert between degrees and radians and recognizing that we do have another unit and how that translates to our graphs and measuring our domain in terms of periods in degrees and in radians. Thanks for joining me.